What's up guys, it's Mars from Audio Judgment and today we are going to do a follow-up to a previous video where I built a 4th order bandpass subwoofer which I was not particularly proud of. So if you want to know what was wrong with it and how I fixed it, stick around. Basically the subwoofer sounded pretty bad. I don't have a recording of it, but it sounded like distortion was high. And I had in mind a few things that might cause this issue, one of which was the amp. As a result, I bought a different amp to check if my assumption was correct. After doing some A-B testings, I concluded that the amp is fine. You can see in the measurements for frequency response and distortion that they are the same. A bit of a difference in the very low octaves that's because I suspect the Monocore amp has a subsonic filter that cannot, be, that cannot be turned off. So my sincerest apologies to Dayton Audio for unfairly bashing their amp. The amplifier works fine, it's just that my subwoofer design is at best mediocre. But before we dig deeper to find out what was wrong, I want to point out something about these plate amps. Remember the time when I built a sealed subwoofer using the Dayton Audio amplifier and it had noisy air leakage? I wanted to test this Monocore amp for leakage as well. Because not building a separate chamber for the amp significantly reduces the build difficulty of the sub and size of the box as well. So I took that box, make a small adaptation to fit the new amp and behold how this amp doesn't leak any air. It's just weird if you look at the back of these amps. This one has a plastic cover which makes you think it's for sure airtight and this one has all of the components exposed and most likely it will leak air around the knobs and connectors. If this was your assumption, we just saw that you would be two times incorrect. Right now I'm thinking I'm going to have another go with uh, this box using the Monocore amp since it's airtight, it will make my life easier and the box smaller. Okay, good. But what I'm going to do different this time? Well, let's follow some ideas from the community. So nice to see that people are sharing tips and ideas so we can perform better at our craft. So I'm going to use some ideas that Brian from DIYsubwoofers.org has pointed out. First thing that needs to change is the folded port. The fact that there are too many 90 degree turns, it will create air turbulence and port might be noisy. Ideally a circular port should be used, because if the tuning is not right, you can take the port out and adjust the size and then put it back in. In case of a slot port, if it doesn't turn out right, you need to live with it or build another box. The reason I chose the folded port was because the port is too long and doesn't fit inside the box. Brian pointed out that I should check out how Bose does it. So the 4th order bandpass has a sealed chamber and a ported chamber. Normally you will place the port in the ported chamber, however what Bose does is takes the port from the ported chamber, runs it through the sealed chamber and exits on some panel on the sealed chamber. While the idea is great, a 4 inch port is still too long and it will stick out of the box. In that case, I decided to use an L-shaped slot port. It starts somewhere from the middle of the ported chamber, runs along the sealed chamber, makes a 90 degree turn and exits on the front panel. Next, I'm not going to slack around with rounding the edges. So I rounded the panel here, at the band and at the exit. Also, I added this piece over here to smoothen the 90 degree transition. Another thing that I did uh, in the first box that might have caused issues was the fact that I used 10mm thick panels for the port. 
I did this to make the box smaller, but they might resonate since they are thinner. Never again. 18 millimeters for all the panels this time. Another thing that I suspected for causing port noise was the shape of the port. It was too narrow compared to the height. And this time I made it wider and less tall to make it more proportional. Finally, I added some dampening material inside the seal chamber and the ported chamber, with emphasis on the ported chamber because it will absorb some of the higher frequencies which might cause unwanted noises. In terms of finish, I painted it white this time and it turned out really nice. Don't judge me on the orange peel effect, I'm not really a painter and also I don't own a polishing equipment nor do I know how to use them. But let's take a look at the results. If we look at the frequency response, we can see that it looks a bit peaky and it's not linear. This happens because of two things. First of all, it's probably because the box might need some tuning fiddling. But since this doesn't use a cylindrical port, nothing can be done at this stage. I'm not even going to check if that's true or not because it doesn't matter. Secondly, and most important, is that this amp has a low-pass filter and a subsonic filter. So the response is expected to have these early roll-offs, which will disrupt the linearity. The blue curve shows the response with the low-pass filter set at 200 Hz, and the orange curve is with the dial set halfway. Judging the blue curve, we can deduce that the response has a plus 3 dB before roll-off, which is perfectly acceptable, sometimes desirable. If you look at the distortion, we can see that it's 1% or below, which is awesome for a subwoofer. Now this time I made a quick recording with a GoPro. If you hear something that resembles as noise, it's just a fake roof rattling. It sounds super clean and I'm really proud of it. The port air velocity is low and doesn't make any unwanted noises. If you want to make this exact subwoofer, I'm going to leave a link to my website with all the building details. Also, since this amp doesn't need a separate chamber, you can build this for your car as well and simply skip the amp and just include some binding posts in its place. That's it for now, don't forget to do all the social media stuff, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you like what I do, and I'll see you next time. Peace!